Hello everybody, and welcome back to the wonderful 101 walkthrough extras. Um, this time we're heading into the gallery, and um, we're going to range around this gallery a little bit weirdly, um, just because I think it, it, it's going to make a bit more sense. Kind of, bit, not really. But first we are going to look at all of the bottle caps. So, uh, this is all the ones that I've got in the game, a grand total of 82 out of 101. Yes, they, they they went to 101 in the uh, in everything, so uh, that was quite fun. Now I have pretty much covered how to get all of these um, throughout the walkthrough, and they do tell you um, there how to get it. But the ones that I'm missing are kind of operations zero zero one to zero zero nine on hard. Um, wonderful Hero, which is complete all on hard, and then 101% Wonderful Hero, which is complete all of them on 101% difficulty. Well, 101% hard, which is difficult to say the least. The next one that we are missing, which you can just see there, is Platinum Paragon. Um, and to get that, you need to earn a Platinum or higher in all Operation Results screen. You can do it on any difficulty. Um, so really, easy is probably your best bet for getting Platinum Paragon. Um, but that is certainly not an easy one to uh, get. Now the next ones that I am missing are Mix Master, which is mix a hundred times, and Rogue Hero, which is wreck three thousand things, which is kind of busy work, really. Next up on the missing thing is Wonder Jiu Jitsu, which is successfully execute Ukemi a hundred times. That's a lot of lot of Ukemis. Ridiculous amount of Ukemis, really. Next one is Nice Try, which is an Innovade bonus at least 10 times in a single combo. Um, the game doesn't tell you that it's in a single combo, but it is, which is evil. Next up we have Custom Blocker, which is obtain all custom blocks. It takes a while, you've got to get beat Operation 101 to get it. Um, and then Operation Annihilation, you can all up but you can't hide, Geth May Cry and Geth Jerk Slayer. All of which are related to the Gethjok, the the, the uh, Kaku Rhaegar's complete half, complete all, and complete all secret missions. Um, then treasure, um, hero collection, which is all wonderful figures. Master Stomper, which is all hidden underground items. And uh, then I believe the only other one that we are well, the only other two that we are missing are right at the end of this list, um, which are both secret um, bottle caps. So it's Punch-Out, which is complete a giant robot boxing match without taking damage, which is really difficult, and Wonderfully Wonderful Player, which you get for unlocking all 100 achievements, and that will be the last bottle cap you get in the entire game. So, yeah. Most of the ones that I have missed require playing on a harder difficulty. Some do, some don't, but... So, here is the list of secret characters. So, this is Vorken. Um, the only one that we are missing is Operation Annihilation, which, as I've said before, is a lot of busy work. Um, there is Autumn Chugi, Immorta, Find All Kakarega, once again, every single difficulty that they appear on. Rogue Hero, I still don't know why that didn't unlock in the course of this, but I would assume I'm close. Um, it just takes a lot. To get Luca, it's the uh, Punch-Out bottle cap. That wonderful thing that eludes me still, even to this day. Then we have Shiragane, um, I believe it's Wonder Gramps, um, Mix Master, 100 mixes. Too much. Too much effort. 
then I believe that this is Poseman. Um, complete Operation 001 to 003 on hard. Um, and Poseman looks like Beautiful Joe, and it's very similar. That is Wonder Director, which is Hideki Kamiya. That is Wonder Rodan from Bayonetta. That is Wonder Jean, also Bayonetta. And then last but not least, Wonder Bayonetta, aka the single hardest character to get in this entire game. So, uh, that basically covers all the bottle caps. Um, I, I hope you can kind of have got the gist of what happens and how to get it all. Um, I would love to have shown you more, but these things happen. Now it's time to look at all the artwork if you want to kind of actually get a longer look at these things, just kind of pause the video and continue. Um, but yeah, it, it's quite fun to see what they called them during kind of concept art thing. So Monster Crab. I, I think that's a better name. Geth Jerk Ninja. Even better. And I, I, I don't quite know what happened there. Um, that was quite, quite, quite the speedy, speedy switch, but... Uh, you also get to see kind of quite a lot of variants, like Gagusine um, becomes Gagujin and Kofun UFO becomes Kofun, and I think it's quite quite cool. Now. In the artwork gallery, there are kind of different sections, um, so that, that that's why kind of we're flicking through some of the things quite rapidly. It's because kind of I'm tapping buttons on the bottom screen to kind of cycle through things, and then kind of accidentally pushing other buttons. Ah, Vorky. So awesome. And then we actually have kind of original concept art of what the of the wonderful 101. So every single wonderful one. It's it's quite awesome. But then also we have kind of the original art style for the game, which was a lot kind of darker, very much more in line with Beautiful Joe. Um, really, that that that's where it's gets its uh, original look from, that very sharp, dark look. I'm quite glad that they went for the slight, for the more colourful style, because I think it does fit the game a lot better. Um, but it's still really awesome to see all this stuff. I believe quite a bit of the... Um, some, well, some of the artwork was shown off at a convention um, near to the game's release, and that was where um, Wonder Rodan, Wonder Jean, and Wonder Bayonetta were revealed. And that still makes me very happy that that is a thing. Now, I'll tell you, the, the only thing that I wish you could do during the gallery is actually kind of zoom in to the artwork because a lot of it kind of is quite small and very detailed and you can't quite kind of look at everything. It's the same problem that I had with like Tomb Raider's artwork galleries and I'm pretty sure Bayonetta's was the same. It's because you want to kind of look at all the luxurious detail that goes on here and you're just not able to. I mean, I would like to think that someday the wonderful 101 will get an art book, because, I mean, some of this stuff is gorgeous. And also, considering the Okami art book and the Bayonetta art book that I own are as wonderful as they are, having one for the wonderful 101 would just be phenomenal. Because... I, I want to complete the collection. <laughs> I mean, that would also require, you know, getting Beautiful Joe and a Beautiful Joe art book 
Don't know whether there is one? Haven't looked it into it at all. Um, still. Now, I believe that we are kind of heading towards the tail end of the uh, artwork. And that's the second element of uh, this particular part. The final part is the sound library, or sound gallery as it's properly called. And that's pretty awesome. Though actually, we now get to look at every single Wonderful One's weapons. So, all of the Wonderful Knuckles, all of the swords, and what they look like, and what they're based on, and the amount of detail in these weapons is insane. Like, you would not have thought that, kind of, they would have developed these incredibly intricate weapons, considering how small they end up in the actual gameplay. Um, but they did, and I love it for that, because these are all so unique, and so awesome. Like, seriously. It's even better when you actually get to see the original drawings. It's like, Platinum Games put up on their Facebook page, kind of, the concept art for the Valiantium Blade, and had all the various kind of gadgets that it could be created from, like a telephone and all sorts, and it's just great to see. I, I want to see more of it. And there we have the Geth Jerk and the Geysok alphabets. I mean, they're e pretty much exactly the same, but uh, ju just quite nice to see. So we've already looked at the wonderful figures, and they are... They're good. Um... Now, I'm pretty sure that the reason they had the cassettes in is because of uh, Hideki Kamiya's love of old game cartridges, and also because on his Twitter icon, he always has a game cartridge in the back of his head. It's quite awesome. Also, the P-Star Prototype, it has a fan in the back, that's awesome. Also something that I didn't realise, once again, a pendant with a, 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 a pocket watch is once again very important to the plot of a Hideki Kamiya game, but that's quite clever. Also, I think you were actually able to see in some of that artwork the... Um, old wonder, wonder pendants, which were kind of more circular, well, oval shape, more accurate. Um, that, that's quite cool. And now, we're into the sound gallery. Now this has got every single song that plays in the game, plus a few more. Um, and the way that this final segment of this extras part is going to go is we're going to go through every single song in the game, not listening to it, but kind of showing you the titles. And one of the awesome things is that they have a karaoke for the one stoppable wonderful Wonder Below. In both Japanese and English. Um, I, I am just showing off the Japanese one here, because um, you you can find the English one everywhere, and you've heard it enough at this point. Um, and actually, I, when I reviewed this game, I uh, put it, I, I recorded it and have a video kind of unlisted on my channel, um, which I used in that review to show showcase 
that particular song, and uh, I will pop a link to that into the description, because it's a pretty, pretty fun, fun thing to listen to all the way through, and to be able to sing along at the same time. It's even better because they have an instrumental version, so you can literally sing along and do a proper full-on karaoke of it. It's wonderful. Now, the reason I'm not going to play every song is because we have already heard them, um, but I, I would like to highlight the ones that I think are phenomenal, i.e. Table's Turn. I've said it before, I will say it again. This song is phenomenal. I, I would hazard, uh, hazard to say that it's better than Climactic Battle at kind of giving you that final surge to kind of save the day. I mean, it's not quite... Uh, part, part of me thinks it's better, part of me doesn't. I think it, it fits this game so well that I just love it to pieces. Now, looking at Lucas' theme was just kind of out of curiosity, because I was just like, I don't remember this song. The same for Professor Shirogane. But, ah, uh, I, I have certainly heard a little too laid back a number of times. Yeah, as well as wanting an art book, I would really love a soundtrack. Guys, please, Nintendo? That there are people who would buy it, like seriously would buy it, I would be one of them. Because some of these songs are just phenomenal. Some of them are fitting during the gameplay, but less phenomenal as tracks in their own right, but uh, still. And now, something that I was actually right about when I was playing the level is that the song where Blue tells you everything is indeed called Determination, and it's wonderful. And we also have Intertwined, which was pretty much all... Well, if I recall correctly, when the game came out, this was probably the single most requested song from the entirety of the Wonderful 101. Like, when I was looking at the um, game FAQ boards, that song came up pretty much every time something about the music was mentioned. Like, seriously. People love this song. And I love it too, because it, it's great. Oh god, this song's depressing. Uh, I, need, I need something a, a little more um, uplifting. And we are reaching that point right now. And wait for it, there it is. Jaginga Planet Destruction Form. Ah, oh, I love this song so much. So, 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 so much. 
one of the best final boss themes ever. Ever, ever, ever. Ray Kondo, you have outdone yourself. Well and truly, with this one. It, it, ah, I have no words. I mean, I kind of do. Um, it, it, it's final ultimate legendary Earth power supermax justice future miracle dream beautiful galaxy big bang little bang sunrise starlight infinite fabulous totally wonderful totally final wonderful arrow phenomenal. I actually did that from memory. Wow. You see, you can remember these things. Um, it, it, it does happen. And now I, I think that's enough of that, and it's time to kind of point out for the future, which is the song that plays in the cutscene afterwards up until uh, the point where you kill uh, Jaginga. It's a pretty, pretty damn good version, I have to say. I really like it. Also, roll out Wonderful 101. And the end credits, just also phenomenal. But they're not the only songs in the game. Um, I, I would point out all the others, because there's a ridiculous amount of songs that I would probably show off, but we'd be here forever. Um, so what I'm instead going to do is uh, just show you these final few tracks. Um, a little bit of, I think, the Round Around March original, um, which is played when you are going down the water slide. The original Punch Punch March, which is played during the Ga the Walga Gujin fight. And then they've got the music from both of the Nintendo Direct trailers that happened. So I believe the 2012 one would be when the game was announced. Um, and 2013, I believe, would be the director's trailer. Trailer. So, uh... It's quite cool to see how far the music kind of came from way back in 2012. Also, my god, it was short. And with all of this, that is the bottle caps, the artwork, and the sound galleries all completed. Um, next time we are moving on to even more galleries. Let's do this. We're nearly done. <laughs>